introduction. Uh, I am uh, Paulo Pierre uh, from the Federal University of uh, Rio Grande do Sul in Porto Alegre. Porto Alegre is uh, right rear and very south of Brazil. Uh, more or less, uh, a bit less than 4,000 kilometers from Natal. Uh, uh, before starting, I would like to, to uh, thank the Wilson and Mauro for this uh, kind of uh, invitation that gives me the opportunity to show some results, some, some work done in, in, our, in our laboratory. I, I, yeah, yes, I also like to thank uh, uh, the International Institute of Physics for some support for this uh, long trip uh, from Porto Alegre to Natal. Uh, the collaborators uh, in this work are uh, listed here. Jovan Lopez, PhD student in, uh, in our uh, institute. Uh, people from uh, São Carlos University, it's very important in its, its work. A large part of experiment were done in this uh, Department of Physics of uh, the Federal University of São Carlos. And uh, other collaborators were also important in this, in this work. And this is a short uh, summary. Uh, uh, first, uh, a short introdu introduction and motivation for this work. And I present briefly the samples and then the, the experiments, uh, finally, some conclusion. Well, uh, everyone knows that uh, superconductivity and uh, ferromagnetism does not go, do not go well uh, together most of time. And this is uh, often detrimental for superconductivity, but in some situations, things are, are, are different, and, uh, this were, uh, and at, at this point, we are. And this is our, our proposal. We are trying to use uh, a superconductivity, a superconducting property, let's say the abricosus vortice, to induce magnetic texture in ferromagnetic materials, y used, uh, let's say, uh, using the stoves, uh, uh, abricosus vortice. And the, the, the device that you are uh, studying is a very simple uh, three layer, two uh, active layers, a ferromagnetic cobalt layer, a superconducting niobium layer, and uh, separated by an, an insulator. And uh, the insulator is there uh, for uh, allowing us to uh, is studied separately the, 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 the superconducting and, and the ferromagnetic layer using, for instance, transport, electrical transport measurement. And also uh, the, the insulator layer, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 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 okay, okay, this is uh, also to, to avoid the, the proximity effect between the, the two active layers. And uh, the idea, as already discussed today, is to uh, use vortices to induce uh, non-trivial uh, spin uh, uh, texture, magnetic texture around the in the ferromagnetic material. And uh, it will be uh, interesting to uh, induce textures at the nanoscope scale. Well, at, uh, magnetic uh, texture, and in, in, in the surface of uh, different magnetic materials are very well known at the me mesoscope scale, domain walls, stripe domains, bubble domains, stripe domains, and in, in, uh, uh, structures, uh, uh, multi-layers at that one, bubble domains in, in bulk ferromagnets. And, uh, uh, but, uh, well, Interesting would be to, to induce uh, some novel uh, nanoscope is, is spin textures using uh, a nanoscope uh, structure as vortices. Then this is vortices, but a, a spin vortex, a, a, a vortex in, the, in a magnetic material that might be some, somehow induced also by 
by vortices. Uh, but more interesting, as also discussed this morning, uh, are the possibility to produce uh, uh, schemules. This is the squirrel uh, structures. Very interesting, where it spin, uh, spins to in a very uh, interesting way. Uh, uh, this our, our excitations uh, having around 100 nanometers, let's say, uh, and something that has the, the size uh, of uh, comparable to the size of vortices. And moreover, they arrange in the surface of a given material as uh, an uh, hexagonal lattices. And uh, well, as you see, uh, the, the, the orientation of the spins at the border of the schermium uh, uh, points is changes uh, as we uh, uh, go uh, towards the center and uh, just uh, it changes uh, progressively at the center of the spin points uh, in the opposite di uh, direction than the, than, than the border here. And uh, important to stabilize that kind of uh, excitation is the, uh, the, uh, the aloshinsky mori interaction. Let's say we, we must uh, break the, 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 the inversion symmetry somehow. And uh, one possibility is using uh, 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 let's say to, to, to stabilize the schemes in, in, the, 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 in the frontier between a ferromagnetic film ferromagnetic material and uh, another material have a large spin orbit interaction that controls this parameter here. Uh, uh, Skirmils have also been observed, this is the case, in, uh, on the surface of uh, non-central symmetric uh, uh, ferromagnetic materials. Well, uh, then uh, our samples, it's a very simple uh, device. Uh, we uh, grow a niobium film over a, a silicon, single crystal substrate. Then you cover the niobium uh, thin film having around 200 nanometers by uh, an insulator layer, aluminum oxide, 22 nanometers. And above this uh, oxide, this, this uh, insulator oxide, we uh, evaporated. Uh, pads, silver pads for electro contacts, so that we can make transport measurements on cobalt uh, on a cobalt layer, 24 mil millimeter uh, uh, placed just above the the, the insulator uh, alumina layer, and uh, above all, we also put a uh, protecting. Uh, uh, Ox uh, aluminum oxide layer, just for protecting uh, the, the cobalt from evaporation to protect the whole, of this, uh, the whole device. This is, a, uh, well, this is a, an idea, a rough idea, uh, uh, how this device is. And, uh, well, we made several characterizations. I, I, I go through this because uh, I have to save time. I, I go directly to experiment. And uh, uh, the experiment, I will start to show in, showing you the magneto, magneto optical experiments uh, that were motivated by transport experiment that they made previously. But the transport experiment I will let to show you at the end if I have time. And uh, well, important is to say that the, those experiments were, uh, were, were carried out uh, in São Carlos. By mainly by the Fabiano Colauto and the group, and he is a, an expert in this technique. I don't know very much about uh, magnetic optical experiment. Fabiano is over there, he is there. If I say something wrong, he is just there for correct me. And, uh, and then Fabiano is uh, uh, already studied uh, for some years the penetration of uh, flux and uh, in uh, niobium films, in, and in certain situations, this, uh, this phenomenon uh, uh, proceeds uh, uh, as, uh, uh, in as those instabilities. Let, let's say the, the penetration is uh, kind of uh, uh, avalanche with dendritic form, as you see here, when the field and temperature are in this in certain range. 
Okay, so I'll show you some experiments. This is our uh, our first experiment, just for uh, testing uh, the the idea. Uh, here uh, you may see the position where the cobalt layer uh, is placed, and the rest is uh, niobium, and the uh, field is applied. Let's just say here, temperature is two. 0.5 Kelvin, and you see uh, the, the 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 vortex, uh, the the flux avalanche advancing inside the the the, the, the film. This is 23 Earth, and then uh, the avalanche eventually reach the the area covered by the cobalt uh, layer and penetrate without too much modification, apparently. The, the drives invite the, the region covered by the cobalt layer uh, without uh, bending or some uh, noticeable no notifi uh, modification. This is uh, just the same thing, but uh, will uh, some, uh, with some uh, amplification. Uh, and uh, and the last uh, transparency, the last figure. Uh, the, the field was removed, and, and you may uh, still see some signs of the, the, the dendrites inside the region where the cobalt film is placed. Well, then, uh, just after those experiments, uh, the film was, uh, the sample was heated up at room temperature, the field was removed, and uh, uh, the, 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 the cobalt film was against. Uh, observed by uh, magneto-optical imaging. Prior and after applying uh, a field, uh, a thousand earth field to uh, completely remove any texture imprinted in the film. And this is after the magnetizing the field, the, the film uh, after applying the, the thousand earth uh, uh, field in purpose to the demagnetized cobalt film. By using a uh, uh, a computer software, Fabian was able to subtract uh, the, the, those two images and obtain this one, uh, th this, uh, this, this result. And you may see that there is a clear imprints of, uh, let's say, a, a, a magnetization texture imprinted in, in the cobalt film that may also be appreciated in this uh, figure that is uh, present in 300 Kelvin. Then a second experiment, sample was uh, cut uh, the side uh, here to, to remove some part of the niobium film uh, uh, so that the, uh, a smaller field could be used and a, a sensor with better sensitivity could also be installed in the equipment. And then the experiments were repeated. Uh, this is uh, Z at C, let's say the, 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 the sample was cooled in zero applied field. Then the field was applied in 2.5 Kelvin. Uh, and here you may see uh, the penetration of uh, dendrites. And uh, uh, they reach the, the, the cobalt film, which reaches almost uh, all the, the cover, almost this, 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 this area, the area of those figures. And, uh, and there is no uh, uh, modification, apparently, due to uh, the presence of the cobalt film. Here is the border of the film. And then the temperature was increased. You may see that the, 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 the avalanche is still there. They broadened the smear a little bit when temperature reached six, 6 Kelvin and then start to disappear at 7 Kelvin, 8 Kelvin. There is no more sign of uh, avalanche. But this is just the cobalt uh, this is just the imprints in the cobalt uh, film due to the avalanche produced by any obion in the superconducting phase. This is a summary, somehow, as a picture summary, wha what we, uh, our observations. Here are the, uh, the av flux avalanche entering the niobium film, his uh, higher field, and then this is the remnant state. This is was uh, this is, is in uh, in 10 Kelvin. As I said before, uh, that structure remains up to very high temperature. Uh, let's say up to to to, to room temperature. 
So this is the main result, in fact. Uh, uh, the magnetic texture produced by avalanche is penetrating the, the, the thin niobium film by the borders uh, are imprinted in the uh, cobalt film, which is separated by the insulator layer. And uh, this texture is robust up to room temperature. Th this is a picture taken in room temperature. Uh, well, there is some some structure, interesting substructure in, in those uh, uh, textures seen here. You see there are some uh, bright regions, some dark regions. It makes a, a beautiful uh, impression that this is a 3D uh, kind of uh, image uh, object. It seems that the, the avalanche are out of the plane of the film, but in fact this is uh, for people that know uh, this technique. This is uh, magnetization, which is uh, turned out, out of the plane of the film. And, and the, the, the in the thickness of the cobalt film used in, in our experiments, the magnetization is parallel to the film plane. And then what, what the, 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 the avalanche made is to turn the, uh, the magnetization out of the plane in the in where the, 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 uh, in, in the in, uh, along the uh, striped domains as uh, shown here. But things are not, uh, we don't not understand uh, very well is, uh, is for the moment. Uh, the, 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 the feature uh, which is uh, the following. Here the sign is the avalanche, the, the black contour, and this uh, red uh, domain is in the cobalt film, it corresponds to magnetization emerging from the field. And then, this is the, the bright uh, 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 domain seen in the former uh, Im image. And, but so the, the, the problem is, uh, the, the, the interesting thing is that this magnetization emerging from the field is opposite to the, the from the film is opposite to the applied field. Let's say the stray field from, from the created by vortices uh, ge generated a, a, a striped domain with magnetization pointing opposite to the to the stray field of vortices, and then uh, somehow outside the, the the location of the the the, the avalanche, you have this uh, blue lines that also. Uh, have the form of the avalanche, but the, those corresponds to domains where magnetization are parallel to the straight fields of vortices. We don't not understand very well this uh, picture. This, uh, still do not understand very well the, this picture. But this is a kind of substructure in this uh, printed uh, 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 I, I mean, uh, texture in, uh, in, in the ferromagnetic film. Well, when, when our uh, experiments were uh, ready, uh, we, we are, uh, the, the paper was almost uh, finished, the text was almost finished, we become aware of this uh, publication by, by uh, Brisbois et al. And th they uh, study a, a, a similar system than ours, an iobin, an insulator layer, and permalloy, and they saw uh, a structure very similar that we have observed. And uh, also, they observed imprinted uh, uh, textures imp uh, in the, uh, their permalloy uh, layer, which subsist above the critical temperature of an iobin. It's not so uh, strong than uh, we observe in cobalt, perhaps because permalloy is a soft magnet, and then uh, the avalanche could not subsist until very high temperature produced by the, <coughs> the, aval the, 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 the texture produced by avalanche. Then quickly, I will show you some magnetotransport experiments because my time is going uh, running fast. And uh, well, th those are experiments that motivate, in fact, the magneto-optical uh, uh, observations. 
and this is a uh, whole effect, the whole resistivity, and uh, you see this whole resistivity, were, uh, this measurement were made in the cobalt uh, film, yeah. and, uh, which is not superconductor, of course. And then uh, uh, here, but this is not zero, excuse me, but it's not a real zero because it's made in uh, on the cobalt film. There are some, some value, but very small value. I, 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 yeah, that's good. That's a very small value, but not real zero. And then, uh, but, but the fact is there is a strong noise that extends up to a certain uh, field value, and then uh, noise apparently disappears. This, this limit where a noise uh, subsists becomes smaller when temperature increases and disappears entirely above the critical temperature of niobium. Uh, at first, we think that was this is was a kind of uh, uh, problem with apparatus, but in magneto resist resistance measurement, there is the same kind of behavior, noisy when the temperature was below the the the, the, the critical temperature of niobium, and then we realize after uh, doing uh, performing the the magneto optical experiment that this noise comes from the abrupt abrupt penetration of flux in form of avalanche in the film and this was uh, uh, okay observed as noisy in the magnetotransport experiment. Well uh, plotting uh, to limit field where noise were observed against temperature we could uh, uh, trace this diagram where uh, the region dominated by those instabilities from the st thermal magnetic instabilities concerning the penetration of flux in form of avalanche, uh, which gives this, uh, this, this shape, which is not very much different from that observed and published uh, years ago by, by, by the, the, the São Carlos group in uh, Bayer thin film, uh, of uh, Bayer niobium thin film. We just don't not observe this reversible region here in the very low, uh, very low field, which corresponds to the Meissner region. Okay, uh, concluding remarks very quickly. Then, then uh, we were able to produce uh, spin textures in the cobalt film uh, using uh, the, 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 the avalanches in a niobium nearby film, and the the domain just up uh, in, uh, on the, 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 the avalanche is um, the magnetization points opposite to the, the stray field of the, the vortices and there are a companion domain with magnetization points in the direction of the applied field and question this let, let, let us to to ask if there is some microscope scale induced uh, structures in those uh, domains. And of course, for deciding this, we need another technique for studying the system. We all made some tries, but we are not able to observe, uh, still not able to observe some uh, nanoscopic structure and those uh, uh, in this uh, textures imprinted in the cobalt film. But in anyway, as pointed by, also pointed by Brisbois, this may be a, a step forward developing a new technique that could be used for vort vortex decoration. It would be nice if you were able to uh, print a single, uh, uh, using a single vortex to, to print a skirmion on the ferromagnetic layer. And then, uh, just a final comment. Now I'm going out of time. Uh, well, just to say that um, magnetotransport uh, measurements in a normal layer undoptively coupled to, uh, to, 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 to superconducting film, electrically isolated superconducting film, may be an in interesting and alternative technique to study uh, dynamics of uh, turn. The names of words of penetration of words in, in superconductor. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>